here we are down the beach again. Um, I've got myself tackled up. I've got three rods out, which goes against what I was saying last week um, about I prefer to have only one rod going. Um, but we're, we're going to try for three distinctly different species today. So I've got a, um, a stinger rig out, hoping to pick up a decent eel. Um, I've got a cod bait out, which is a cocktail of worm, cuttlefish and cart. Um, we've talked about cart before. Um, it's, it's essentially it's um, the guts of crabs that have been frozen into sausages and then we, we cut them into sections and put them in a bit of finger bandage and then the finger bandage is hooked onto the hook um, and that, is, that melts in the water and releases a beautiful scent into the water which um, hopefully attracts a nice big fat cod to, to the bait that's left on there, the cutlet and the worms. And then the third one I've got out there is uh, because I heard that it's been some sole caught again um, I've got a sole rig out. Now, I'm suspecting I'm going to get plagued with whiting on this and, and actually rattling and banging as we speak. I'm just rigging up a, a replacement um, rig for it. And once I've got that rigged up, I'll bring that and see what we've got on there. So that we can do a quick turn around. So that's what we're going to be planning to do. So distinct three species, cod, conger and whiting. Oh, well, sorry, not whiting, um, sole. That's what we're hoping for today. So let's go. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how collect my cart cocktail baits. Um, we've got the cart in a, a chilled thermos because we need to keep it frozen because we don't want because once it melts it just turns into a goo. Um, I've got some other stuff in here. Uh, inside this foil there's actually some cart salted frozen wings but we're not going to use that until later on possibly. So back into the freezer and close the lid down. So here's my little sausage of cart. Keep it wrapped in foil again, it just helps it stay frozen a bit longer. And it's a sausage, sausage of um, crab guts essentially, but it's frozen into a sausage and then you cut the sausage. The sausage is about that long when you, when you get them, you cut them into three uh, and then you put them into a bit of um, finger bandage just to act almost like a, a rubby, rubby dubby or chum. Um, also I'm going to put on here, I'm going to put myself a couple of worms. These aren't the greatest of worms. Um, but we'll put three of those on there. And we'll put a bit of um, cuttlefish. This is a cuttlefish bone. This cuttlefish is still fairly frozen. Which makes it a little bit of a challenge to put on a little tiny cuttlefish again. Put it down with a slightly longer one. Let's try and cut a longer section of birds. Slightly longer section. I'm going to carry on defrosting whilst I'm rigging up this um, tackle. So the line I'm using here is um, 50 pound fluorocarbon for my hooks and moves. I, I, I always like to use fluorocarbon uh, because of the perception that it's, it's virtually impossible to visible underwater. Um, just been my experience that I catch more fish when I have fluorocarbon on. Uh, I've, I've threaded a piece of um, silicon tube up the line and then I'm putting on uh, two hooks, one as a panel and then the main hook um, which is a um, 4 um, Aberdeen uh, and I'm doing three twists grin and knot to tie that on uh, courtesy of uh, Mr Sandman who showed me this knot on, on YouTube and I must admit I am now using it all the time uh, very quick to tie and it ties on it's, it's, it's very accurate you can, you can virtually put predict where the knot is going to form uh, and once it's tied and it's pulled tight and cinched down it, it never slips. Excellent knot, you can get rid of any tag ends if you want to get rid of tag ends. Um, uh, yeah, great knot, thank you very much. Uh, Mr Sandman for that, if you don't know who I'm talking about, have a look for Sandman Tackle uh, Talks on YouTube. There's a very good YouTube channel, it's been going for some years, uh, so many different tips on uh, tackle. 
Um, and, and as you know, I've got, I'm back to beach fishing after 20, 20 to 25 years away from it. And there's so many new things that are out there. Um, and I've learned so much from that. And in fact, the bait, this cart, is something I picked up from the Sandman Tackle Time, Tackle Talks. Um, so here we go. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of worms on here as I talked about um, and all I'm going to do at the moment is just thread them up the line so they're just going to dangle like they're, like they're dangling off a washing line you'll see how this uh, all ties in in a minute so we've got three worms going in going through the thick end of the worm but just hooked through not threading them up the line as, as you would do normally uh, third worm because you know what we're trying to attract is we're trying to attract cod, so we want a nice big mouthful of a bait for them. Uh, so we've got three th three nice worms on there. Uh, I say nice worms; they're not the biggest of worms, I have to say. Um, Tony's tackle for some reason not been getting particularly big worms at the moment. Well, that's what he tells me. And then we're going to hang a bit of cuttle on there. And I've got a little knob end of a worm here, I'm just going to thread that up the snood of the hook, it's not necessary but I'm just doing it to, um, as I've got it. Right, the next thing we've got here is my um, cart pin, something I've made out of a bit of stainless steel wire, uh, it's got an eye on it that's offset so that it folds up and it folds over the back of the hook like that and that is what we're going to thread our cart onto. Uh, what I found is that um, if, you, if you hook your hooks through the cart, uh, through this bit of uh, finger bandage, it's an absolute pain in the backside to take the thing off when you're re-rigging. So um, this mounts the cart on the back of the hook uh, in a nice rigid manner. Uh, we'll let all the worms dangle down for the moment. We get our uh, pin and we're going to thread it through our little cart sausage in a minute. You'll see this. There we go. Here's my cart sausage. Pin's going to just thread through one side of it. I've left a tag end on the on the wire. It was folded over. I've left a bit on there so that when we, we push that through, there are, there is a there is a couple of pieces of wire going through the car which will stop it rotating around. And I think I'll just put it on the wrong way around first time, so I'll have to move it again. Just a second. Here we go, coming off. Rotate around. So we've got two pins through there. So that's now held on there, and it's nice nicely uh, aligned with the back of the hook. Angle our worms down up to the to the eye of the hook. Um, bring our cart needle or kite pin up, up in line with the hook snood, and then we bit our, uh, bring our bit of silicon um, tube down. The panel hooks come down as well. So that's that's just going to tie on and um, hook through the tops of the worms. So that's holding it all straight. So as, as the, the cart disintegrates and uh, dissolves into the water, um, the worms are left in a nice straight line along the hook and, and a bit of cutler as well. So a little bit of tube coming down. It's all a bit fiddly. These sort of things probably you would be best off setting up at home and then uh, freezing them and then sticking them into the into your uh, little thermos flask, bring them down to the beach, and it's just a case of pulling it out and hooking it straight on. There you go, so the tube's through there. So that's holding that pin along the back of the hook. Got our dangly worms now. A bit of readjusting going on. Make sure the hook's not buried inside the um, finger bandage and then we dangle those down across the cart bait and then good old bait elastic where were we without bait elastic I don't know um, I, I swear by it now I'm just going to bait elastic this whole thing together so tie the top end of the worms in so, so wrap the worm round there. I think that's probably not the best way of doing it. Maybe next time I'll do it, I'll lie them parallel to the cart bait. Gathering them all up in the bait elastic. Using quite heavy duty bait elastic. This is the, you know, it's one of these winders. They come with three levels of bait elastic and this is the, uh, the stronger one. Because you know there's quite a lot of stuff going on here and, and as that uh, little bag of uh, crab guts dissolves, 
obviously it's not going to be quite so thick so we want to make sure that the elastic keeps taut and, and tying everything in so it's drawing the baits down onto the hook as, as, that, as that goes. Okay, so there we can see, I'm winding it all together now, uh, getting plenty of um, elastic around this bait. I have to say, this is probably isn't the best best of these baits that I've done. Um, I think what I might try doing as an experiment, and, and it's all experimental these days at the moment, you know, I'm learning a lot of new things, is the, the, I might try preparing a couple of these at home and then and then freezing them again, uh, keeping them all ready, already frozen. Uh, so it's just a case of popping them out of the uh, thermos flask clipping them straight onto the, uh, the rod rather than have them hanging which I did here I hung this up uh, and of course by the time I'd wound in uh, and changed the cart was starting to melt so uh, we'd lost some of the nice scent uh, so that's what I'm going to try next time so anyway all the time um, I was um, preparing that cart bait my sole rod, or the rod that's got the sole rig on it, was rattling away. Um, I suspected it might be whiting, and of course, um, when I went down and wound it in, sure enough, two little whiting on the hooks. Um, if the third hook had probably had a whiting on it because the bait had gone, but um, no whiting there. I'm only using very small hooks because it's a sole rig, so they're only size four hooks. So, um, quite likely that a whiting's mouth passed in and out and was gone. Um, let's have a quick look at this sole rig. Uh, it's three three rigs and a cascade, and at the top of the rig, um, above above it all, is a drill bullet. Obviously, it's very important with sole that you keep your bait hard on the bottom because they are definite bottom feeders. Uh, I'd already rigged up a second rig, um, ready to go, uh, and that's hanging up on the rod, and that just clips in place. Uh, this is a this is a shop bought pre-tied rig, um, but. Again, small hooks and straight on and straight back out and then I can come back up and unhook those two whites in and get them back in the water while they're still flapping uh, to, to live another day. Right, there you go. Literally just touch the water and I've got a whiting bite on that little rod already. I'll leave it to rattle for a bit, there's three hooks on there. Um, I mean, it, it is designed for catching, um, in fact, this one's got two hooks on it, but designed for catching better fish than whiting, but you never know. Leave it for a bit, see if we can't pick up a target species, which is our old Sylvester sole. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, there it goes, Look, rattling away, that's definitely whiting in it. Definitely white if you're seeing this. In the beam of my new headlamp, um, Fenix HD65R, I think it is. Got it from Tony's Tackle in Eastbourne, and so far, very impressed with it. Very impressed. Be interested to see how long the battery lasts. Okay, catch you later. There, after after all the grizzles and um, filthy looks he gave me last week, uh, I've actually bought him a beach bed, um, just a little bed that we can put on top of my tackle box and bring down the beach with us. Uh, it's taken him a while to find it, and in fact, he, his go-to place was to, was to get himself tuggled up on all the, the rod bags again. But I showed him the bed, and it, so far he seems to be liking it. Right, well the stinger. Works in as much that um, it's hooked a white in, which has stayed on there patiently for all this time, um, but uh, hasn't attracted Charlie Conger along to uh, help himself to it. But we'll, we'll rebate that and put that back out because it clearly works. Um, yeah. So the stinger rig then. Um, didn't show you tacking this up. It's on a it's on a standard sliding pulley rig. Um, which the idea being it gives a little bit of freedom for the eel to come along and take that uh, whiting and then work it way into his mouth um, and then we've got a couple of little hooks I think it's a, it's 
size one, I think. And then a little tiny circle hook above that. A bit of luminous um, tape there just to help with the attraction of it. And then above it, that's probably about a 7-0 circle hook. The idea is he comes along, he eats this, he goes on, and this then hooks it in the side of his mouth. Um, yeah, I did, I did see some little knocks on this earlier on. And I kind of ignored them, but, uh, which is what we need to do, because obviously you don't want to strike into this until it, you see the rod bending over. Um, stop saying um. So we just bait this up as we would do normally for a, for a, a, a worm bait. Spread it on the hook. Try and get it as far up this bit of snood as we can, because we want the white in to obviously get this near, be as near to the big hook as we can get him. And then this little circle hook, just go through it a couple of times, just to hold it all in place. And the circle hook is kind of on there as a bit of insurance, um, because fish tend to self-hook themselves on circle hooks, which is what we want. We want them to self-hook on this. Uh, we don't want it, not, we're not striking into it. And then of course sliding pulley rig as we as we discovered before put the uh, hook into the splashdown clip amazing bit of kit these um, there's some stuff called triton um, trident in the northeast the guy out there is producing some bait clips which look pretty good as well and i've ordered some to see how they go I'll give you a review of them find a little gate there that ain't going to come out until the thing hits the water now and then we slide this up and the slide in pulley rig part of it is that up here we get the swivel it's on the end of this uh, thing and we bring that down to meet up with the hook on here which just keeps it all nice and tight and oops I have to let go of it of course keeps it all nice and tight and nice and compact for the cast Yeah, I was a little bit dubious about this rig when I first heard of it because I thought, well, you, your lines, your hook snood is sliding up and down the trace, so you're not, it's not, not a form, a, a solid hook up, but it seems to work. Make sure our leads are in nice and tight. We want this, we don't want this lead pulling out. I mean, that white ends are rattling on the end of it. We want that in there so that when the cod and conger comes along, he finally swims off of that big hook in his mouth, the hook sets. There you go, stinger rig. Here's something I'm going to invest in. Um, I borrowed these, well, uh, or rather they were left on my boat because the um, Woody who comes out of my boat couldn't get them to stay alight. Um, he left the two on the boat. I brought them home with me today uh, and um, went to great lengths to try and get them to light. Um, the other one wouldn't, wouldn't stay alight at all, but this one is still going quite strong. And essentially it's, it's, a, it's a piece of, I don't know, some sort of carbon which you light and it smoulders away there it's lying there between um, that glass fibre there to so it don't get too hot but it's lovely and warm lovely and warm so I think I shall invest in something like that if I'm going to put my money on a call on this I would say dogfish or little strap conger although generally with either of those species by now I would have felt some sort of a tug Let's go down near the water's edge though, just in case it is something that worthy of uh, giving a bit of respect to. Ooh. Oh, here we come. What have we got? <laughs> We've got a very foul look white in. <laughs> I wonder if it felt like it was a weight coming in sideways. I don't know how that's happened. But that's what's left of my bait. Definitely mullered.
So here we've got another carp bait all tied up. Got some worm in there, got some cutler in there, and then we've got the bag of carp on the back there, which is going to be infusing with these juices. Um, either going to attract smaller fish or big old fat cod's going to come along and take the whole lot of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a, a video in a while showing you how to make these um, these sausages uh, have a bit of finger bandage but other than that you could actually go on to uh, YouTube and look up Sandman's Tackle or Sandman Tackle Talks uh, and he shows you how to do it there which is how I learned how to do it and there we go water whiting Be confused with water white and breaking bad. Put our sole rig back out. That was the whiting rig. Try a bit of sole. Bit of James Brown. The godfather of sole. Right, I think we want to go down the in between these two rows of wet, this one is quite a long way over that one. Twist out these lines. I have a tool for doing that. Dogfish, dogfish, right in. Dogfish has managed to completely wrap himself up in the line. So this is definitely going to be a force it out on the beach. He's hooked himself and he's rolled up the line, hasn't he? Okay. I thought it was something with a bit of weight, but uh, I wasn't actually putting up much of a fight. So, sort you out in a minute, mate. first trying um, a braid shot leader which I've never done before always used to be 50 pound monofil I used to use in the old day tried these tapered leaders and although I like the knot I have had a few disasters with it, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. But I've uh, got to try braid. But it does make a funny land, <laughs> funny noise. It might be the type of braid I'm using, it might be a bit coarse. Right, bail arm open, finger fob on. In between the rods, up onto the ground.
impressed with these circle hooks, you know. I, I, for years, I, I, I think I tried them and I didn't like them. I mean, these aren't actually circle hooks, they're um, something that's very similar. Um, but what I didn't realise, and it wasn't until again watching on YouTube, that it's all about how you tie them on a hook, like I tie them on the line. Um, and, and you do need to tie them on with a cinch knot that goes around the shaft of the hook. If you don't do that, they don't seem to work. But that, they do work. Um, and the beauty of it is, is that they always seem to lightly hook the fish. And quite often it's in the corner of the mouth. Um, yeah, and, and as we saw there, th those two fish have been on that rig for quite a while, I would think. Well hooked, but not too deep with it, not gullet hooked. Oh, both, both return flies to the sea. A tiny bit of worm that. Now, as I said, this, these tiny hooks on this Paternoster rig, really, the target species is sole. And I have caught sole off this beach 20 or 30 years ago. And this spot here, which is in front of the tea kiosk, back in the day before they built the beach, was the sole mark, apparently. Um, they've got to be here. Either they're here today, of course, it doesn't matter. Here today, but gone tomorrow. So tiny little mouth and a sole. So it only need a little hook and a small amount of bait. And it has to be really anchored on the bottom. Because they they go along and they've got like a a fan and they're just shuffling through the through the bottom, picking up their feed. So, always trying different ideas. This this one here is an imp. It's another type of um, bait clip. Idea is it clips into there, the water hits this little thing here and releases it, flips through it, through the, the arm there and releases. And then I've got some cascades on here just to clip these things down. I, you know, you, you could cast this out as a flapper. I just think that there's, a, there's more chance that if you cast this out as a flapper, that um, the bait flails around and, you, and you're actually fishing with, with bear hooks. This just keeps it a bit neater and tidier for the cast. And you've got a bit more chance of the bait being in one piece. And of course, the only thing that's really holding it together is this is this imp. So once that releases, it releases the other two. And that's ready to go. Look at that, that little rig's out there and it's rattling already. Whoa, it's a bit more than a rattle, isn't it? Quite a tug, but I would say it's just channel whiting. Um, yeah, if I wanted to, if I want to catch hundreds of whiting off here, I could do it very easily. Very easy. There's plenty out there. Um, they're just being a bit of a nuisance at the moment, to be truthful. Because they're only little. They're not big enough to. to you could you could eat them, but there's a lot of fiddling around to get any sort of value out of them. Um, must be thousands of them out there. And I'm sure it's what the conger eels and um, anything else, any predatory fish that are out there feeding on. Okay, grub, I'm hungry. Okay, so <laughs> time for tea. Uh, and what we're having for our tea is uh, it's American military food. It's called Meals Ready to Eat or MRE Meals. Um, and this is what um, soldiers eat when they're in active service um, and and there was a period in my life when I was um, working at a very sandy place and this bird ship was all we got to eat every day um, so let's have a look how this works I did, did one of these on my boat so if you've seen this before in forward but you get your meal and this in this case it is chili and macaroni mm. <laughs> wonder you get your chemical cooker and the chemical cooker basically has a pad in here which is a chemical in it with when it gets wet it gives off a lot of heat um, so we need to open this bag
Ik nog goed zo. And then we want a little bit of water. So I went down the beach, gathered some water up down from the sea. Um, and the only perceptible I have for gathering water is a plastic bag. So it only, it only takes a very little amount. Let's see what we can get in here. Some water everywhere. Oops, and the leg. And it, as it says there, do not overfill, and I might have overfilled it a very tad, but not, not too much to be concerned about. And then what we've got to do is you get our meal you know, we want to warm up. Ooh, we've got to wrap in knock on that rod at the moment. And then we put that in the bag. And it wants to go on top of the chemical cooker. So that needs to be at the bottom so that it gets nice and wet and hot. Now what I found in the past when I've done this. But if you use seawater, which we have here, it seems to cook faster, it gets hotter. If that's true or not, we'll find out. There was a good one the other day and it wasn't very warm at all. So. Oops. Down. Past the chemical cooker. And we want to get the water in there. Seal this top. So Fold it over, fold it over, and then roll it up. Let's get bog, bog scene. We get foxes around on this beach sometimes. And then it comes with a cardboard sleeve here, which kind of holds it all in place and acts as a bit of an insulator. Once the cooking process goes on, and that pushes it over there. And like a so. I can feel it getting warm. It's getting quite hot actually. Quite hot indeed. I've got a feeling salt water that goes a lot faster. Okay, we we'll shake to make sure we're getting the chemical cooker nice and wet. And then we'll leave that just to stand at an angle. Sit there for about five or six minutes. It's creaking. If there's a loud bang and then the end. Yeah, the video ends, it's because it's blown up and killed me. All right. Okay, so let's uh, turn off this, this and we'll come back to it in a minute. <laughs> Just like last time, it does look like something that the cat might produce but my recollection of these, these meals they're pretty good now, it comes with a nice plastic single-use plastic spoon um, let's see mm -mm -mm. not very hot Bags of energy because it's obviously meant to keep an infantryman going for the day. <clears throat> Memories coming flooding back from eating this. I was um, working in a, an American forces base in Tikrit in, in Iraq called Thob Danger, which didn't actually fill you full of confidence. And the American military unit that was there, while well, we were there, in their wisdom, had given the youngest bloke in their unit the task of looking after the food. Now we get a delivery once a month of food, and generally it was all freezer food. But you know, the Americans know how to live. You know, on their main camps, they'd have steak and lobster every Friday. You know, this is in Iraq. But anyway, fob danger. We get we get a resupply every month. By the second week, we would have been we'd have run out of proper food, and then all we had left was young person's food, which was frozen pizzas and cornetto ice creams. Now, <laughs> that's nice as a treat, but not every day, every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner 
Um, so we could actually, we could also break into the MRE so the meal was ready to eat. And so we used to eat quite a lot of these as well. Took me a long time before I could eat a Cornetto again. in very slowly and it weighs a lot. If I was gonna put a name to a fish I'd say a ray. But it could also just be a great big pile of rubbish. It's not, it's not fighting at all. back. Weird, because ever so often it gives up a little bit and then stops again. If it was a fish of any shape or form I'd expect the feel shaking of its head. Crab. Lobster. Squid, big squid, big cuttlefish. So what we've got here is a whole calamari squid and I've packed it with a bit of cart, uh, cart wings, salted cart wing and they're elasticated in place uh, in a panel with a little bit of luminous um, rubber strip at the top as well. Out in and do white in different species. They're all nicely hooked. A washing line full of Cat whiting and channel whiting. But I reckon if we stay fishing now, we'd start catching some fish. And we start tomorrow. The teeth on these guys. Got little needles. under his chin. Set a teeth on him. 
and we're off the beach. The end of another good night on the beach. A bit chilly, chilly tonight, and I reckon that if we could have stayed later, we might have actually uh, started to catch some fish. But um, unfortunately, we've got an early start tomorrow. And the dog's cold. I fancy a beer.